Yeah, John, I wonder if this game was obviously so much different than the first game. How, how did you assess what happened? Uh, what it appeared to me is they needed it more, wanted it more, more physical, uh, took us out of stuff physically, and then physically banged us around offensively too. So, you know, they deserve to win. Um, if I had to do it over, I would not play Ty Ty. I shouldn't have played him. And I asked him twice, why don't you just step back? He said, I, I can do this. And then I was going to not play him in the second half. And I did. And so, you know, I called him in and I said, look, just, I can do it. I, I should have just gone with my gut. But um, my thing to the team after is you got to own your performance. The game was physical. They bumped. It was a bump and grind kind of game. If you didn't perform, you didn't come up with rebounds. You didn't make baskets. You got beat. When the phone call is made, you tell them, I'm not talking about it. Goodbye. Because you have to own it. You can't let anybody alibi. Own it. Um, and we got manhandled. And, uh, you know, they, it was a revenge game. We're, what we did to them down at our place. So they're playing better. They're moving the ball. Um, they shoot the ball better here. They shoot it really well here. John Hale. When Ty Ty did check out for the last time, he looked pretty frustrated when he went over to the bench. Are you concerned at all he re-aggravated the injury or made it worse, or was that just a sign of him not being 100%? I don't tonight? know yet. I don't know. We'll have to see. we got some time. So we have a few days before we have to play again. We'll see if, you know, he's going to be able to go. Daryl Bird. Yeah, John, you talked a few days ago about how this team needs to see everything now so you're not surprised by anything in March. It looked like tonight was kind of a game where you got punched in the mouth right out, right out of the gate. Did it surprise you that some of the guys didn't – match up to that fight and does this kind of experience help you when March comes around? Well, it's, it helps if they don't let anybody alibi for them. If they own their performance, like what you just said, everybody saw can't, can't put it on anybody else. Um, their guards kicked our guards. It was the other way around, even though Viscovi had a bunch down at our place, their guards kicked us. And then Fulkerson, um, you know, we kept saying how you got to play it, but we stretched out. And instead of making them shoot jumpers or bodying them and stuff, guys, you know, we, we had some breakdowns in some of the game planning. But, you know, at half, I just said, hey, why don't we make a comeback? So here's what happens. I said, this could be the most exciting thing. We get it to eight and have the ball twice and turn it over. I'm like, why did you go nuts? We could have ground it out, made it six, made it four. All of a sudden it's on them, but we're not ready for that yet. We went nuts. One was guy just played harder than you and took the ball from you. The other was we went crazy, but you know, we missed plays when we had it there and we had our chances. I told him, let's go. You know, we had, we hadn't had one of these games in a while, but we had one. And I got to give Tennessee the credit for what you just said, Daryl. They punched us in the mouth and we didn't, you know, we didn't do the same to them. Kyle Tucker. Kyle, the other, the other guy that kind of went off and seemed to be in some pain was severe. He was holding his wrist. Do you know anything about that? Concerned about that? Oh, no, I just took him out. You know, whether it was wrist or how he was probably just took him out like the end of the game. Let's finish the game. And, and Avion played well. And again, I wasn't angry with uh, Dante or Bryce. They got beat on back doors, you know, where they stopped playing and Dante fouled. But they haven't played that much. I was throwing them in just hoping maybe someone would give us something. And they couldn't. And, and how could you expect them to? I haven't played them that much. All right, I've got time for one more. Jerry, go ahead. Yeah, John, I wanted to ask you about Kellen. I, I think he didn't have a – he didn't take a shot until like 4.20 to go 
in the first half. I wondered if their defense was that good or he wasn't maybe more, uh, he should have been more aggressive. They were, they were all over him. Uh, even the one he had late, like he wasn't prepared to shoot it and they were flying at him. Um, we were trying to get him free off the of screens. He couldn't get open. Like he could not get himself open. And that is he's working harder than you. You're working to get open and he's working to stop you from getting open. You're never open. What does that mean? And so, you know, wish he would have shot a couple more balls, but like I said, we got it to eight. We had our chance. And, and at that point, you know, it goes to 15. I was just coaching them out to situational at the end of the game. That's what I was doing. Just seeing if we're in situation stuff that we can do. What do you, John, what do you think of the SEC race now? I, I know that's not a top priority, but you're not too back of Auburn in the loss column. What, what if any, significance? Well, I'm not worried about it because everybody's schedule is so different and some schedules are way heavier than others. So at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. We're one of the better teams in the country and that's who we are. Now we got to go play that way. We got another really tough one coming up and then another really tough one coming up and then another really tough. I mean, it's the schedules. It is what it is. I mean, at the end of the year, it'll be one, two or three in the country, our schedule. So um, this team has performed. We, I want to give Tennessee the credit for how we play, but it wasn't one of our best efforts and their energy and their, their fight. They just have way more fight than us. Good.